Hi folks, Astronomy Live. Tonight I'm going to be showing you guys some new software I've developed for making it easier to determine the orbits of satellites independently. So, first step is to collect images of a satellite with stars in the image for reference points to be able to astrometrically solve the image, determining the coordinates of every pixel in the image. You can use astrometry.net to do this automatically and I actually run that software locally on my machine but you can also upload the images to astrometry.net uh, to their website to have them solved for you then once you download those images the newly embedded uh, WCS data can be used to determine the coordinates of every pixel in the image that's what this software then does it takes uh, the images that have the WCS data embedded from astrometry.net and allows you to automatically generate a file containing a list of coordinates of the satellite over time along with uh, timestamps of uh, every picture this can be used to calculate the orbit of the satellite and you simply click on where the satellite is in the image to make those observations and to generate the text file uh, containing the astrometric observations so uh, in this case the program is set up to log the observations as having occurred at the start of the exposure. It looks at the FITS headers. It's only designed to work with raw FITS files, unfortunately. It's not designed to work with JPEGs or even raw files from an SLR camera or anything like that. It's only designed to work with raw FITS files from an astronomical CCD camera. And I've set it up based on the FITS header format in uh, my SBIG camera. It should work generally with SBIG cameras. I don't know if it will work with other brands of astronomical CCD cameras, but even if it doesn't, it's pretty easy to uh, alter the script a bit uh, in, the, in the code to fit the FITS header format of your CCD camera. Uh, so you can just look at the code there and see where it's looking for the date of observation and then in the case of the SBIG camera that actually contains both the date and time of observation and it splits that out into separate strings so that it uh, can log that as the date and time of observation so because it's logging it based on the start of the exposure that's where we want to click we want to click on the satellite streak in the image where the streak began at the start of the exposure in my case for these images it's at the top left of the streak and so that's where I'm going to click to log that observation now when you execute the program you also have to specify a few other things uh, if you simply try to run it without specifying anything it will show you uh, the commands that it needs uh, in order to run you need to specify the minimum and maximum values of the histogram uh, you can treat it as if it were an 8-bit image from 0 to 255 it will automatically convert that number uh, based on it being a 16-bit image um, but I find it easier to work with uh, based on a value of 0 to 255 just so I have smaller values to work with in the total range uh, and it will also accept floating point numbers here not just uh, whole number integers so for example in this case I've specified the black level as being 0 .001 uh, that then gets multiplied out to be a 16-bit number uh, and then the maximum value on the histogram 2 uh, quite low as you can see but in the case of 16-bit images there can be quite a lot of data in even such a small range as that uh, then the final number at once is the magnification factor so in this case the image was binned 3 by 3 and as a result the total resolution is quite low so I would need to be able to magnify the image in order to see clearly where the start of the streak is so I've specified a magnification factor here of 2 again it will accept floating point numbers in addition to integers there at the top right is also a white screen. This is from a text file that uh, I've set up to uh, that it has to be it has to be in the same directory as the program itself, uh, and it specifies the object number, the international designation. These are the numbers of the satellite itself. This is not mandatory. You could put gibberish in there as long as it's the same number of digits. It it needs to be the same number of digits that you see there. Uh, if you change the number of characters there, it will potentially screw up the IOD format of the output file so you want to leave the number of characters the same but it could be anything here it, it's not going to matter as far as calculating the orbit goes but if you're reporting your observations to other observers you want to make sure that your your designations there are accurate so that uh, you're reporting on the correct satellite 
the station number is critical for calculating the orbit you need to specify the station number that corresponds to the station number that will be in the configuration file for the program you use to calculate the orbit whether that's a program like uh, LFIND or SATFIT I'm going to be using SATFIT here in a minute uh, and the station number from my location that I've set that program up with I've given a des designation of 9997 it's just a random number but that's what it will correspond to in the configuration file for that program then finally the sky condition number this is again not critical for uh, calculating the orbit but if you're reporting it to other observers the standard format is to give a single character designation uh, for the sky conditions ranging from excellent to terrible and so uh, that's what I've got there uh, alright so once you have all of that set up and you're running the program you'll see it pop up with a window of the actual observation and then you simply click where the satellite was at the start of that exposure so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then it will load the next picture it'll take it a moment to load um, it's not necessarily the fastest program but it will get the job done and it's a heck of a lot faster than trying to manually format the observations now if the satellite has dimmed at the start of its streak for example and it's hard to see exactly where that streak is you can always skip the file by hitting the S key and then it will proceed to the next image so here I'm going to click again where the start of the streak appears to be and then it proceeds to the next image again so if you uh, once you fire it up it will automatically load all of the FITS files in the directory it's located in one after the other and it will keep going till it reaches the end of that list uh, if you get done early and you don't want to keep uh, logging observations you can simply hit uh, the Q key to quit and it will leave. Now I've gone ahead and logged uh, all of the observations I made during my last webcast where I was tracking SDO towards the end of the webcast uh, and I've set that aside in a separate file. So uh, that's visible here you can see this is a list of all the observations I made uh, from that webcast and now you can simply either solve the orbit directly from that uh, although that doesn't cover a huge span of time or what I've done is I've taken these observations and combined them with observations over previous days uh, from tracking the STO spacecraft into one massive file and gone ahead and plugged that into a sat fit so that will allow us to see how well the orbit is conforming to more recent observations so the orbital elements have not been refit to the new data you can see where the new data begins the delta t column here uh, goes to negative two seconds so the previous orbit determination that i made is within two seconds of the uh, observed position of the spacecraft the orbit that i calculated previously predicts a position that's only two seconds off from the observed position uh, from a few nights ago during my previous webcast uh, and then the, the cross-track error is quite low as well but you can definitely see where it uh, comes in there so now I can fit the, orbit, uh, the orbital elements to the new observations in addition to my previous observations in order to refine it further so that's uh, simply done with a step command this is not my program now this is uh, sat fit and I'll include a link to that in the video description so you can go get that as well so it will quickly converge on a new solution which will be partly based on the new observations uh, that I just con conducted and measured uh, with my software here uh, now before I had included those new observations it was in an RMS of uh, 0 0.0025 and that tells you basically how accurate uh, the orbit is how well it conforms to the observations I could keep running it here and actually probably get a, an even better uh, solution. I've already surpassed uh, the accuracy of the previous orbit. It's now fitting even better to these observations uh, than the previous orbit did. And there we go. So that's that's pretty good right there. That's uh, that's not too shabby. Uh, let me just pull up real quick and see what the orbit looks like according to the official orbit. Uh, so let's see here. Now the epoch here. What is this? This is. 
18th. I'm going to go ahead and update that. Uh, February 2nd is fine. Just make sure that's fitting to the new date and time of the orbital elements. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, my orbit, uh, uh, my orbit determination, came up with an inclination of twenty nine point five seven degrees. The official inclination is twenty five twenty nine point five three degrees. Uh, my orbit determination has an eccentricity of point zero 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 four. The official orbit is point zero 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 four. Uh, both are, are quite low eccentricities. They're very circularized orbits as expected. Uh, the orbital period is, uh, for my orbit determination, 1.00268 uh, orbits per day, and that's right in line uh, with the official orbit, 1.00268 uh, orbits per day and change. All right, that's quite, uh, quite good. So now I can update uh, the orbit uh, that's on that file by writing it out to the file and uh, going ahead and hitting U and enter for update and then I can quit out and uh, that will save it to that file. Uh, so now I've got an even more refined orbit determination. It wasn't too far off before, it was within about two seconds, uh, but that just provides further confirmation that the orbit determination is correct. So yeah, you can use that to refine an orbit or uh, calculate a whole new orbit. If you have, say, an unidentified object, you can calculate the approximate orbital elements by tracking it over time and using this program to uh, log the observations in IOD format. All right, so you can check those links out in the video description. Thank you all for watching. Clear skies, folks.